All right, well, welcome everyone. Today, um, we'd like to thank you all for joining us. My name is Griffin Ralston. I'm the CEO at Ralston Instruments. Um, I've been with Ralston Instruments 23 years in various capacities and have been a CEO since uh, 2013. Today, we've got, looks like people joining us from all over the world, from France, Poland, uh, UK, um, Taiwan. We appreciate the time. It's, I know it's late some places, so thank you for, we tried to pick a time that was convenient for everyone. Um, we'll keep everyone on mute today, um, as there's quite a few people on the, um, on the call, um, but um, um, we'll answer all of them. Um, I'm joined today by Jean Kobus. Jean has been with Ralston Instruments for over 13 years in various capacities. Um, he's got deep subject matter expertise in pressure and temperature instruments and their application, and today he will share some of that knowledge with you. With that, I'll turn it over to Gene Kobus. Thanks, Griff. Uh, as Griff said, we really appreciate you joining us. Um, just a little background on Ralston. You know, been in business for 54 years. All of our hardware and software is designed, made, and supported in the United States. A family-owned business with a long history of new product development. We have an accredited ISO 9001 quality system for over 10 years now. We're certified to manufacture intrinsically safe products for the US, Canada, Europe, Australia, as well as the rest of the world. Uh, earlier this year, we'd like to celebrate our calibration laboratory became ISO 17025 accredited as well. That was a big achievement for us and we're really proud of it. And all of our products are CE marked for sale in Europe as well. Today's agenda, first of all, what is data logging? Why is pressure and temperature data log important? We will discuss some of the key types of data logging, discuss some of the reasons why electronic data logging is the way to go. We will talk about the industries and applications for pressure and temperature data logging. And lastly, we'll discuss Ralston's solutions that can help in these applications. So what is data logging? What exactly do we mean? There are several types. Data logging is a process of recording data over time for the purpose of analyzing, monitoring, or measuring specific variables or conditions. This can be done manually by a person taking readings at regular intervals, uh, automatically using electronic sensors, devices, or software. Collected data is typically stored in a file for further analyze, analyzer use. Data logging is commonly used in various fields such as environmental monitoring, scientific research, industrial process controls, and equipment diagnostics. It can provide valuable insights to trends, patterns, anomalies in data, which can help identify problems, optimize processes, or improve performance. So exactly why is data logging important? There are several reasons why data logging is important. The first is troubleshooting. It can help identify problems, trends or patterns that may indicate larger issues or optimization. It can provide insight to performance of equipment and processes. It can help with compliance. Many industries have regulatory requirements that mandate the collection of data storage or data logging can help ensure that you are meeting these requirements and provide evidence of compliance. And lastly, predictive maintenance. By monitoring equipment performance, it could collect data over time. It can help identify when maintenance needs are needed before a failure occurs. This can help prevent downtime and reduce maintenance costs. So let's discuss what are the types of data logging. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with manual data logging. You know, think when you go to the doctor, how often do they write your vitals on a piece of paper instead of logging it electronically? You know, so hand entering data is still very common when data is collected in, infrequently and not based on time. Data is often recorded by hand and then entered into a digital system later. Manual data logging is typically used when automatic data logging systems are not worth the time, the money, or the setup. Next is continuous data logging. Data is recorded continuously without interruption typically used in scientific research and industrial monitoring. 
data is collected periodically, but a data logger remains in place. <clears throat> For example, in this photo here, the chart recorder is in a museum recording temperature and humidity. Another type is time-based data logging. With time-based data logging, you can record data at regular intervals. This can either show slow or high-speed logging, depending on the process being monitored. For example, a weather station might record temperature and humidity every hour. Another example is event-based data logging. Data logging is recorded when a specific event occurs that's typically not time-based. Readings are typically recorded manually, can be used to track changes in pressure or temperature over time. So why electronic data logging? A better option, why it's a better option than manual data logging or paper-based? <clears throat> Accuracy. Digital data loggers are more accurate than paper chart recorders because they can measure data at much higher resolutions and with greater precision. Paper charts are limited by their paper size and line thickness. Efficiency, they are much more convenient to use than paper chart recorders because they require no manual intervention. Once they are set up, they can be left to collect data automatically, freeing up staff time for other tasks. And cost, often more cost effective than paper chart recorders because they do not require paper, ink, and they require less maintenance. Data storage. Storage for much longer periods of time than a paper chart recorders. These allows for more extensive analysis and trending of data over time. And lastly, traceability. The user has documented proof that the data was collected in case that is needed later. So how does electronic data logging save time? Electronic data logger eliminates the need to type into a PC handwritten results. It eliminates the need for paper and chart interpretations of a chart recorder. It also eliminates the need to digitize paper-based data to share and store. How does it save money? Electronic data loggers are, takes less manpower, fewer people to change charts, manually log data, or check what someone else has written down. Chart recorders are somewhat unreliable and require frequent calibration, so eliminating these codes. Limiting this will save money, reduce cost. Paper charts are large and take up quite a bit of room, which can be eliminated with electronic logging. How is electronic data logging more reliable? Collects data at clearly defined intervals, easy to interpret than paper charts because you can zoom in on specific sections. These logs also reduce the potential for mistakes, transposition, and other areas of manual data collection. Electronic data logs can help you with trend analysis. Most importantly, they provide date and timestamp proof of what was happening at any given time. Now let's discuss selecting a data logger. There are some key factors to consider. Accuracy. Make sure the data logger is accurate enough to meet your needs. Range, ensure the data logger covers the range pressure and temperature needed. Sample rate, how often do you need to collect data? This depends on the process being monitored. Data storage, how much data does it need to store and for how long? Uh, hazardous location approval, do you need to log data in a hazardous location? If so, this excludes most data loggers on the market. And communication protocol, do you need wireless communication or is USB acceptable? So what are some of the industries where pressure and temperature data log is used? As you can see, there's an extensive list here, you know, aerospace, agricultural, food processing, manufacturing, oil and gas, along with several others, wastewater, warehouse monitoring, shipping and storage. What about the applications for pressure and temperature data log? One type of application is gas distribution. A logger can be monitored for pressure and temperature for a week or month to discover when pressure drops. In water distribution, a logger can detect low water pressure or water hammer events. Manufacturing, it can monitor and control various industrial processes, such as chemical reactions or material processing. Research, data loggers can monitor conditions during an experiment, which can be used to adjust conditions. And test and calibration, when calibrating 
pressure transmission transmitters, it is necessary to monitor the temperature of the media as well as the ambient temperature. For short-term data logging, a good solution is the Ralston LC20 gauge. It gives you, you can connect the multiple pressure or temperature devices via Bluetooth, control intervals and units of measure on the app. You can start and stop logging and download your data to your mobile device and export data log files via, uh, export log files via the, the native sharing capabilities of the mobile device. So I uh, had the opportunity to, to go on site with this new product that we came out with. Um, we did a four hour hydrostatic test and at the end they were able to share right from their iPad and send the results to management for them to interpret and date the results. So very uh, easy to use, very capable of uh, uh, sharing results and saves time and money. An excellent solution for long-term data logging is our Ralston Field Lab in a weatherproof enclosure. I can log up to 2 million data points on board at any interval the user needs. With a solar panel, it can log indefinitely. The user can collect data infrequently or it will store data, it'll store data, uh, um, excuse me, for uh, three months or more. So I'm sorry, I have a typo here. It can store the data as long as you wanna keep it on the field lab. Um, the data will uh, be collected with the solar panel. It'll allow you to collect up to 2 million data points for as long as you need. Um, it also has the capability for you to download the data via USB cable or wirelessly. Another application is high-speed data logging. Some example of these are engine combustion analysis to optimize engine performance and reduce emissions. Engineers often need to measure the pressure changes that occur during combustion in engine cylinders. Fluid dynamics research measures pressure changes in fluids flowing through pipelines, nozzles, and other flow channels to study behavior of fluids under different flow conditions and to optimize fluid flow systems. And oil and gas exploration. Measure pressure changes in the reservoirs as fluids are pumped in and out of assesses to <coughs> productivity of oil and gas reservoirs. The data can be used to optimize well production and improve overall oil and gas recovery. A good solution for high-speed data logging, <clears throat> the Ralston Field Lab. With it, the user can create tests that can log up to 128 times per second. The data can be downloaded to a PC, also be reviewed and exported in a PDF or CSV file, and analyzed <clears throat> where the user has the opportunity to analyze and graph the data using Excel. PSV or relief valve testing, the user needs to perform pressure safety valve ASME section eight and have consistent repeatable results. The user needs something to automatically detect crack and research receipt pressures. They need to perform tests on liquid gas or steam valves. The field lab is also an excellent solution with this. The software provides you with PSV and PRV testing up to 200 times per second to capture consistent crack and reset. A leak test can be performed if necessary. And test reports shows graphs of each test along with reference and DUT information. As you can see in the slide there, that's example of the test results. Two of the three graphs are shown in this example. And though it can also be exported in a CSV if needed. Other applications for pressure and temperature data logging is hydrostatic testing. The user tests the strength and integrity of a system. The test involves pressurizing the pipeline to a level higher than normal operating pressure to check for leaks or weaknesses. They also need to monitor temperature throughout the test. Hydrostatic test, testing is required on gas and oil pipelines, pressure vessels, valves, fittings, and gas cylinders. The field lab hydrostatic test kit, you can set up a test with uh, and will connect to one pressure 
and one or two temperatures wirelessly. The wireless feature <clears throat> eliminates all cables and wires. Um, all data is collected on board with the Ralston Field Lab. After the user is done, they can download the results in a PDF or CSV format. As you can see in the slide here, <clears throat> the exploded uh, view of that, that's what the face of the field lab will look like. It'll show you pressure, temperature one, temperature two. The uh, field lab is acting as the host and sending all the information from the LC temperature probes and collecting it and data logging it for you. Another excellent solution for hydrostatic testing is the Ralston LC20 field lab gauge. You can remote log data using Apple or Android devices, log data from multiple pressure and temperature devices, download data to the Ralston field lab mobile app, export data to share easily. Lastly, you can form, perform hydrostatic tests using a PC and multiple data logging devices. In the graph here shown, um, you can connect up to 15 different devices to a PC simultaneously. This is shown in an example here with three devices. We have a field lab, an LC pressure gauge, and an LC temperature probe. It allows you to log and graph and view your data live. And you can also have the option to grab, you can see the yellow bar there. If you grab the yellow bar, you can scroll back in time and look at any dependent events. Another application is event-based data logging. Some examples are uh, checking airplane or truck tire pressure. Measure the pressure in each tire at a specific moment. <clears throat> the readings are recorded for future reference. Measuring strut pressure. Log strut pressure upon, upon takeoff and landing to ensure there are no damage to aircraft. Pressure testing of pipelines. Pressurizing a pipeline with water or air to check for leaks or weaknesses. The pressure is measured at specific points in time and recorded for analysis. And checking propane tanks. Measure the pressure inside a tank at a specific time. <clears throat> the field lab allows you to record such data as tire pressure or tank pressure. It allows you to create name points for specific tires or pressure devices being measured. Optionally include target pressures and tolerance and values. Logging the results of a pressure calibration is the last type of event-based data logging we will discuss. A uh, user needs to check pressure uh, instruments at multiple points up and down a scale, evaluate each device being tested against their allowable tolerances. If a device under test is out of tolerance, it must be adjusted. Data is logged and a certificate is created to document the process. And once again, <clears throat> the field lab software allows you to do this, and it's a great solution for logging pressure calibration. Uh, users can log a device under test, reference values, and the difference at each point. Test results are shown on the screen. The results are color-coded green and red for pass and fail. Instant tolerance feedback at each point, so no need to calculate in the field. And export reports with all data in CSV or PDF formats. And just to review, Today, we discussed the following. What is data logging? The data log important? Pressure of temperature monitoring? What are some of the key types of logging? What are some of the benefits of electronic data logging? And what industries use data loggers? We also talked about some of the applications and instruments that Ralston provides for temperature and pressure data logging. I hope this gives you a more thorough understanding of pressure and temperature data logging. And with that, you know, we appreciate your time. We will be sending out a short survey after the webinar with a few questions. We'll also be sending a link to the recording of the webinar in the next few days. And we also allowed some time for some questions and answers. And so with that, Griff, I'll turn it over to you to answer some of the questions we've received from the uh, attendees today. Griff? Excellent. Well, that's a lot of good information, Gene. Thank you very much, we appreciate it. Um, so it looks like um, we had quite a few, uh, quite a few questions um, today. So it looks like a couple of these questions. Uh, can you adjust the interval um, on your data loggers? 
Um, so yes, it looks on all the data on the LC twenties. Um, you can set um, on the on the mobile app. You can set the data logging interval. Um, and on the field lab, there's um, each of the test modes has its own ability to um, set um, set an interval. What is the highest pressure your data loggers go to? Um, the highest pressure we have now is 15,000 psi, um, and we will be releasing um, a 30,000 psi version in a few weeks. Um, so that will do either pressure or uh, pressure and temperature. Um, so um, we'll have quite a few um, quite a few options for that. Um, do you have data loggers for hazardous locations? Um, yes, the field lab, um, we didn't talk too much about it, but the field lab is um, uh, class one, division one, intrinsically safe in the US and North America, and ATEX um, zone zero and IECEX approved um, for um, the rest of the world. Our data loggers will, oh, do you have data loggers that record temperature in harsh weather conditions? Yes, the uh, LC20. Um, will record a uh, temperature um, and it goes minus 30 degrees C to 150 C um, and it is IP67. So it's submersible one uh, up to one meter in water. Do you have data loggers that run on AC power? Uh, yes, any of the LC20s, um, when you plug them into, the, um, it, it, you can, there's a, an accessory uh, AC power uh, that you can plug in um, and uh, it will it will switch from battery power to AC power. Um, when it does that, it will stay on continuously. Is the software free? Yes, it is. Um, both the um, you're free to download the uh, it's called Field Lab Mobile um, app on iOS and Android, um, and then the um, Field Lab Desktop is available on our website uh, RalstonInst.com or RalstonFieldLab.com, um, and it's uh, it's free. Um, how far can the wireless transmitter work from the receiver? Um, it's a 300 foot range um, for the field lab. Um, and then the Bluetooth, it's Bluetooth BLE, with low energy. Um, so it's about a hundred feet, uh, but we've, that's the, the you know, depending on, um, depending on what's in the way. So depending on, um, you know, interference. Um, does the field lab have a battery on it? Um, can it work without the solar panel? Yes, uh, the Bluetooth or the Field Lab has a um, lithium-ion battery um, that will allow it to run for about uh, three months on a single charge um, without a uh, without the solar panel. So that's not necessary. Um, and our um, weatherproof enclosure kits um, come um, with or without a solar panel. Can you connect the Field Lab to multiple computers? Um, not at the same time. Um, the computer or the PC is the host, um, so it'll only connect uh, to one at a time. The LC uh, gauges will connect to multiple. Uh, you can monitor uh, from multiple devices, so you can monitor them from multiple um, tablets or phones, um, but one of them is in charge. Uh, how, does, oh, how does the field lab compare to the Amatech Envision for hydro testing? Um, the Amatech Envision has, I believe, two uh, ports on it, uh, which can be pressure or temperature. Um, the, the field lab has a pressure on it, and then it can wirelessly connect to two. Uh, so the, the field lab has one more temperature uh, port. Um, do you have something to measure ambient temperature for our hydro testing? Um, yes. So the um, the LC20 uh, thermal probe, um, you can connect. Uh, you can connect uh, wirelessly, and it will. It will. It can be used um, for ambient. One of the temperatures can be ambient, and the other one can be um, for um, the 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 actual uh, liquid temperature inside. Uh, the max and min temperature of the field lab. Um, it is. It is rated for minus 10, uh, I believe it's minus 10 C to 50 C. Yes. Um, and the, the limitations are um, are on the electronics and the LCD. Um, we are not recommending it, but there are many people who use it in, in other 
uh, temperatures beyond that, um, but um, it is officially certified from minus 10 to 50 C. If it's minus 30 there where you live, you might want to consider relocating. That's right. That sounds <laughs> that sounds chilly. <laughs> I can pick on I can pick on Matthew. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, excellent. Well, thanks again for all your questions and your time today. Um, and when when you close the webinar, um, a quick survey will pop up. Um, it has, um, first of all, how did we do, but also um, some, some suggestions of possible webinar topics, as well as you can fill in um, topics that you'd like to hear more information on. And um, we'd really love your feedback on that because um, it's, um, it's, it's critical to um, uh, helping, uh, helping, helping us out. Thanks, guys. We really appreciate it. Just to double down on what Griff said, uh, we know you take time, valuable time out of your day and some of you uh, that are overseas are taking your personal time to join us. So thank you very much once again, and we look forward to having you at our next one. Thanks so much. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Yep. Okay.